Pastor Ryan here as we come to week two of our Lenten study for 2021, looking at Russ Ramsey's book, The Passion of the King of Glory. Last week we had an introduction, and then we looked at the obscurity of Jesus, how he comes from nowhere. Um, he really comes from not a prominent family. He comes from an area of the country that is not prominent, a place where um, Nathaniel even says of, of Nazareth, Nazareth, can anything good come from there? Um, and so Jesus rises from obscurity. And then we see here in this second passage or the second part of Russ Ramsey's book to talk about the rise of the popularity of Jesus. And he uses various passages in the Gospels to look at the way in which people were truly attracted to Jesus and attracted to who he was, to, attracted to how he taught, attracted to what he did and what he could do for them the way in which he cast out demons and the ways in which that he healed illnesses for people. And it reminds me uh, today of, of this passage uh, from John, the Gospel of John, uh, John chapter 6, when Jesus feeds the 5,000. Jesus feeds uh, the 5,000 and then he has the disciples go on ahead of him. Uh, certainly you can take the time to read John uh, chapter 6. And then Jesus uh, comes and he uh, actually joins the disciples uh, on the other side of the sea um, after um, after he has walked on water to follow them. And we pick it up in verse 25. And when they found him on the other side of the lake, that is the crowds, they asked him, Rabbi, when did you get here? Jesus answered, I tell you the truth, you are looking for me, not because you saw miraculous signs, but because you ate the loaves and had your fill. Do not work for food that spoils, but for food that endures to eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. On him, the Fa God the Father has placed his seal of approval. Of course, we've seen that in our weekly sermons, the seal of approval that it takes place at least twice in the baptism of Jesus, uh, the voice of God uh, coming out of God the Holy Spirit and descending like a dove saying, this is my beloved Son, um, in whom I am well pleased, and then also on the Mount of Transfiguration, Mount Hermon, as God says in a voice in the midst of that cloud, um, this is my son whom I love, listen to him. That seal of approval um, that has been placed on the son. Verse 28, and when they asked him, what must we do to do the works God requires, Jesus answered, the work of God is this, to believe in the one he has sent. So they ask him, what miraculous sign then will you give that we may see it and believe you? What will you do? Our forefathers ate the manna in the desert. As it is written, he gave them bread from heaven to eat. Jesus said to them, I tell you the truth. It was not Moses who has given you the bread from heaven, but it is my father who gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is he who comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. So they said, from now on, give us this bread. Then Jesus declared, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me will never go hungry, and he who believes in me will never be thirsty. But as I told you, you have seen me, and still you do not believe. All that the Father gives me will come to me, and whoever comes to me, I will never drive away. For I've come down from heaven, not to do my will, but to do the will of the one who sent me. And this is the will of the one who sent me, that I shall lose none of all that he has given me, but raise them up on the last day. For my Father's will is that everyone who looks to the Son and believes in him shall have eternal life, and I'll raise him up at the last day. You see the crowds here, the, those from the 5,000 that Jesus fed, they wanted Jesus. They desired Jesus. They were attracted to Jesus, but they were attracted to Jesus for what Jesus could do for them. They had their own agenda, not to die to themselves, but rather that Jesus might come alongside and prosper them in their own agendas. And so it is that Jesus' popularity rose. From this day, actually, at the very end of this, we find uh, that many turned back from that day. Many disciples deserted him. That's John chapter 6, starting in verse 60. And then Jesus turns to the 12 disciples and said, what about you? Do you want to leave also? And Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. We believe and know 
that you are the Holy One of God. And so the question I think for us this Lenten season is for us to search our own hearts and to search our own motivations for being attracted to Jesus and wanting to follow Jesus. Do we follow Jesus? Do you follow Jesus? Do I follow Jesus on our own terms? For what we can get out of it. Rather than submitting our life in such a way that we simply believe in who he has revealed himself to be. You see, these who wanted to be followers of Jesus, they said, what must we do to do the work of God, to do the works of God, to, to earn eternal life, to, to get, to grasp, to do. And Jesus says this, what you need to do, the work you need to do is believe. And immediately they counter Jesus by saying, if you will do a miracle, then we'll believe. But I think the question for us is, do we believe the evidence of the miracles themselves? And the greatest miracle, of course, being that Jesus died on the cross for our sins, that he shed his blood. So it says in Hebrews chapter 9, verse 22c, without the shedding of blood, there's no forgiveness of sins. And Jesus himself on the cross became the sacrifice for us that we might receive forgiveness of sins. I mean, that great miracle that even though he died, yet he lives as he was resurrected on the third day. And the question is, do we believe it? And I don't mean do we, or are we able just to tick a box that says, oh yes, I believe that's true. But the question is, do we believe it? Do we lean on it? Do we rely on it? Is it the ultimate truth that drives our lives? So that our agendas are no longer our own, but that we submit ourselves to him. I invite you as you humbly and I humbly submit ourselves to Jesus as we reflect upon our own sinfulness and our own need for a savior. May we rightly know that the popularity of Jesus isn't such a thing that Jesus has come to serve our own needs and our own wants but rather because of the majesty of Jesus, because of his authority, because he is full of truth and full of grace. May we bow down and worship him. Amen.